Proverbs chapter um, 7, let's look at this. Now, there's quite a few scriptures here, and then I'm going to conclude this. But I want us to look at chapter 7 of Proverbs. And there are 27 verses here, and I think they're very important. I could give you one or two verses, five or seven or whatever, and uh, make an application, but I want you to see the entirety of what God has to say uh, when he's really pumping out the wisdom here, uh, especially through Proverbs. And so listen to what it says now. My son, keep my words and lay up my commandments with thee. Keep my commandments and live. And my law is the apple of thine eye. Bind them upon thy fingers, write them upon the table of thine heart. Say unto wisdom, thou art my sister, and, under, and call understanding thy kinswoman, that they may keep thee from the strange woman, from the stranger which flattereth with her words. For at the window of my house I look through my casement, and beheld among the simple ones. I discerned among the youths, a young man void of understanding, passing through the street near her corner, and he went the way to her house. In the twilight, in the evening, in the black and dark night, and behold, there met him a woman with the attire of an harlot and subtle of heart. She is loud and stubborn, her feet abide not in her house. Now is she without, now in the streets, and lieth in wait at every corner. So she caught him and kissed him, and with an impudent face said unto him, I have peace offerings with me this day, have I paid my vows. Therefore came I forth to meet thee, diligently to seek thy face, and I have found thee. I have decked my bed with coverings of tapestry, with, covered, with carved works, with fine linen of Egypt. I have perfumed my bed with myrrh, alloys, and cinnamon. cinnamon. Come, let us take our fill of love until the morning. Let us solace ourselves with, lo- with loves. For the good man is not at home. He has gone a long journey. He hath taken a, a bag of money with him and will come home at the day appointed. With her much fair speech, she caused him to yield. With a flattering of her lips, she forced him. He goeth after her straightway as an ox to the the slaughterer, or as a fool to the correction of the stocks, till till a dart strike through his liver, as a bird hasteth to the snare, and knoweth not that it is for his life. Hearken unto me now, therefore, O ye children, and attend to the words of my mouth. Let not thine heart decline to her ways, go not astray to her paths. For she hath cast down many wounded, yea, many strong men have been slain by her. Her house is the way to hell, going down to the chambers of death. And so we see here that Solomon didn't listen to the Lord. God uh, appeared to him twice, and he lost his kingdom. He lost his good standing in God's sight. Uh, brought, it would brought about a penalty of uh, judgment upon uh, Solomon and his, and his lineage and upon the nation of Israel. And God divided up the tribes and left only the tribe of Judah, uh, for the nation of Israel, for David, and for Jerusalem's sake. And so, sin results in ruined failures. It alienates estates, and it alienates friendships. 
it lays a man um, of honor down into the dust. And, and uh, that's not a good thing for you and I that are born again. This was an atrocity uh, that Solomon allowed to come into his life uh, to be affected in such a way, in such a dishonoring way uh, of leading his life after what the Lord had done for him and for his lineage. <clears throat> Ashtaroth is the plural of Ashtoreth, a general designation for all the false gods of the neighboring nations and their idols. Milken, Molkoch, Malcolm are all the same deity, which were worshipped by the children of Ammon. That within this within the uh, the book of First Kings, chapter eleven, that I had previously read to you. They built. Uh, they burnt children as sacrifices and, and offered them to these gods. What a terrible, terrible thing they did. In Leviticus 18, 21, and thou shalt not pardon me, and thou shalt not let any of thy seed pass through the fire to Moloch neither shalt, the, shalt thou profane the name of the Lord thy God. I am the Lord. And so let's see what it says here in Leviticus 21.5 here. Turn over there. Leviticus chapter 20 and verses 1 to 5. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Again, thou shalt say to the children of Israel, Whosoever he be of the children of Israel or of the strangers that sojourn in Israel that giveth any of his seed unto Moloch, he shall surely be put to death. The people of the land shall stone him with stones. And I will set my face against that man and will cut him off from among his people because he hath given of his seed unto Moloch to defile my sanctuary and to profane my holy <clears throat> name. And if the people of the land do any ways hide their eyes from the man when he giveth of his seed to Moloch and kill him not, then I will set my face against that man and against his family and will cut him off and all that go a whoring after him to commit whoredom with Moloch from among their people. <clears throat> Chemos was a god of stone. <clears throat> the children <clears throat> sacrificed on the altar uh, the same way as they did uh, to Moloch. Now, I mentioned to you that Solomon was the wisest man that God ever allowed to have wisdom down here on planet Earth outside of Jesus Christ, who is God. And he built a altar, Solomon built altars to Ashtaroth, Moloch, and he built high places, according to Scripture, for the God of the little G God that can't hear, can't see, and can't do anything for Chemos. <clears throat> and that happened because Solomon disobeyed the first commandment in Exodus chapter 20, and he disobeyed God, and God tried to correct him, as I mentioned twice already previously, and just went about his own way because his heart was led in a different direction. <clears throat> the Bible is very clear in the Old Testament God said to the nation of Israel, you take, if you're a man and you're going to get married, you take of the nation of Israel a woman that serves me, that serves Jehovah, 
that serves the true God of the world, the father of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And God says today in the New Testament that you and I are not to be unequally yoked with unbelievers. For what fellowship hath light with darkness? Or what communion hath Christ with Belial? And so the biblical principle and application I want to make here, and the truth is that I want to get out for us, is we need, as born-again believers, we need to attempt to the best of our ability to teach our children that they, when they go looking for a mate, whether it's a male or a female, opposite to their gender, not male with male and not female with female, that's an abomination to the Lord. But we need to teach our children, when you go out and you come to the place where you're seeking a mate and a wife or a husband, that he or she needs to be born again and not be unequally yoked. And we'll avoid that pitfall that Solomon fell into because all of these <clears throat> thousand ladies that he had taken for wives, <clears throat> 700 concubines and 300 main wives, were only supposed to have one wife or one husband. And so they led his heart astray. He never listened to his mother who had wise counsel and gave it to him, that scriptures that I shared, he never listened to God. God appeared to him twice. You know, if, if God was ever to manifest him, himself to me, I would just, I just, I, I just, I'd be astounded. Uh, it's, it's, it's not going to happen. I'll see the Lord one day when he takes me home. But for someone like Solomon, to be given um, the ability of an understanding heart to look after a community of the nation of Israel that might have been two to three million because he asked for a wise heart, you know, and the Lord gave him longevity of life and health and abundance more than any other king, but mainly wisdom. He threw the wisdom out the window when he violated scripture. And so we need to take heed and take stock that this does not happen to you and I that are saved and to our families that we're trying to raise in the admonition of the Lord and teach them the biblical principles and the correct doctrines of Scripture. May this be a warning to us. <clears throat> Lord, we give you thanks and praise now for this time, Lord. <clears throat> I pray that you'd help us not to fall into sin, Lord, and get our eyes off of the truth and following these false gods. These gods, Lord, could be um, the God of complacency, the God of pride. Uh, Lord, we could uh, make one of our cars, we could put so much importance on our car that we could turn it into a God with a little G and worship it basically because all of our time and energy and money is being pumped into this vehicle, Lord, as I've seen it in some people's lives, some of the neighbors in my neighborhood that I've seen, Lord, uh, their car is more important to them than you. And so that is sin. And so the other thing, Lord, it could be, it could be our wife or our husband. It could be one of our children. It could be one of our grandchildren uh, that we love and adore to the point where 
they're more precious and important to us than what you are, Lord. And so I know that's displeasing in your sight and we'll suffer uh, those penalties too of judgment from you, Lord, as a born-again believer. I pray, Lord, that you'll help us to stay focused and allow you to always be the preeminent one in our lives that will put you first. Lord, what we have today is all around the world. One of the big gods with a little g is the God of sports. And many, many born-again believers are not in church because the soccer fields, the football fields, the baseball fields, the arenas with the hockey. And there's nothing wrong with sports or exercise per se. But when they take us away from church, Lord, and when uh, a football game for a trophy is more important on a Sunday for us missing church, that I believe is dishonoring to you. Help us, Lord, to set these things aside and realize that we need to get back to the basics. Your, body, your word says, if my people which are called by my name shall humble themselves and seek my face, then will I hear from heaven and then will I heal their land. We want our land healed, Lord. We want our families healed. And it's only gonna happen when we put you first. Help us not to sin and put something else ahead of you, Lord. And we ask these things in Christ's name. 